there are two general situations in which mismatch can occur. One is when there is rapid change in culture uh, over time, and the other is when humans move in space. The mismatches in time are caused by the major cultural and epidemiological transitions that have been occurring. And there we can see an estimate of how fast things can happen by studying lactase persistence, because we have a time point when uh, we started dairying culture, and that is when selection began for lactase persistence. In space, we can study emigration and immigration. They are moving people between different kinds of selection regimes. And we can start with the agricultural and industrial revolutions. So in the left panel, we have a historical timeline running from Paleolithic about 10,000 years ago up through the present. In the center panel, we have lifestyle. And over here, we have the microorganisms that were associated with that. So in the Paleolithic, we were in small groups of less than 100. And the agricultural revolution was associated with the first epidemiological transition. Prior to the agricultural revolution, we had worms, mycobacteria, uh, hepe, gut microbiota. We had helico helicobacter pylori, salmonella, toxoplasma, and lactobacilli. Then, in the agricultural revolution, we started living in larger social groups. We domesticated animals. We had cats and dogs around. There was increased orofecal transmission. At this point, about 97% of the population was still living in a rural environment where they were living on farms, exposed to animals, feces, mud, untreated water, and so forth. And that continued up to the 18th to 19th century in Europe. In this period, there were major microbial changes. So the more settled lifestyle actually led to more worms and more orofecal transmission. And there were novel infections that epidemiology suggests were not part of the Paleolithic community of pathogens. They include a whole group of viruses, the paramyxoviruses and so forth, that are mumps and uh, things like that, measles. This is where influenza B and C came in, and also where smallpox, cholera, plague, and typhus appear to have entered the human population to become significant diseases. The next major transition is much more recent. That's the Industrial Revolution and the associated second epidemiological transition. Our lifestyle shifted to being urbanized, where there was a lot more concrete and tarmac where soap and detergents became widely used, food was washed, there was less orofecal transmission, chlorinated water became available, there was less contact with animals, and there were antibiotics, vaccines, and deworming agents. So we had fewer worms, less toxoplasma, less helicobacter, less pseudocommensals from mud and water, and a less varied gut microbiota. Now, much of this mismatch we currently experience is the result of these two events, the agricultural revolution and then the industrial revolution. So before agriculture, more worms, helicobacter, salmonella, gut, diverse gut microbiota, tuberculosis. We ate fruits, vegetables, nuts, meat, and fish. With agriculture, we picked up measles, mumps, flu, smallpox, cholera, and typhus. We domesticated animals, we drank milk, we shifted to eating more grain, we were living on farms and had more orofecal transmission. Then with the Industrial Revolution came SERP detergent, antibiotics, deworming, less exposure to helminths, less toxoplasma, helicobacter, salmonella, and a less varied gut microbiota. So with the post-industrial world, we are more sedentary and we have more global travel. To interpret the kinds of changes that go on in these major transitions, it helps to focus on lactase persistence, the ability to continue to digest milk as an adult. Prior to agriculture, the ability to digest milk was present in infants up to about two years of age, but then disappeared. 
With the domestication of dairy animals, that made it advantageous for adults to digest milk, and we know that dairying originated about three to 9,000 years ago. So lactase persistence, the ability of adult, adults to digest milk, is currently not universal. Its prevalence ranges from about 95 to 97 percent in Scandinavia to only up to 10 percent in East Asia. Some populations can't do it at all. So data and theory together suggest that the selective advantage of digesting milk as adults has been about 0.5 percent to 3 percent, which is pretty strong. A 3 percent selective advantage means that a person who can digest milk as an adult has on average 3 percent more grandchildren than does a person who cannot digest milk. So the message is that evolution takes hundreds of generations to adjust populations to new conditions. It has not yet completed that adjustment for this important element of our diet. Now what have emigration and immigration done to mismatch? Immigrants bring with them diseases that the populations into which they're moving have not yet experienced. They also leave some pathogens and symbionts behind them when they move. They switch to new diets and lifestyles. And all three effects result in mismatches that have health consequences. Here is what happened when Europeans brought smallpox into populations that had never experienced smallpox. There were huge epidemics. So in Hispaniola, between 1507 and 1518, up to 300,000 people died. In Mexico, in just one year, 1520 to 1521, between 2 and 15 million people died. In Peru, between 1525 and 1527, at least 200,000 died. In Brazil, between 1550 and 18, 1880, about 3 million died, and so forth. So when smallpox entered the New World, it caused enormous epidemics. There are other effects. The pathogens can be left behind. So for example, when the slave trade brought African Americans to the New World, they left malaria behind in Africa, but they retained the costs of sickle cell disease. Immigrants today to developed countries suffer more allergies and asthma than do locals. They are leaving their microbiota behind and they're moving into a more hygienic environment. They also switch to new diets and lifestyles. So when Japanese immigrants came to Hawaii about 1890 to 1910, they switched from a diet high in fish, rice, and tea to a diet that had more red meat, animal fat, and milk. Men of Japanese ethnicity in Hawaii were then twice as likely to die of heart disease as those who lived in Japan, and the children of Japanese immigrants were about 10 centimeters taller than their parents as a result of the milk and animal fat in their diet when they were growing up. So to summarize, mismatches can occur in both time and space. The agriculture and industrial revolution produced major shifts in lifestyle and in diet and in exposure to microorganisms, and our biology has not yet had time to catch up with that. We experienced serious health consequences from the agricultural revolution. So the domestication of living in cities brought with it things like flu, measles, smallpox, cholera, plague, and typhus that Paleolithic hunter-gatherers did not normally encounter. With the Industrial Revolution, the consequences include obesity, type 2 diabetes, osteoporosis, colon cancer, and cardiovascular disease, as well as some of the benefits, such as lower infant mortality and longer life, which are both reasons that we are now exposed to some of these chronic diseases. Immigrants experience changes in diet and in microbiota that can actually dramatically change the prevalence of non-communicable diseases in immigrant populations so they have more asthma and allergy.